do you know 80% of indian population don't meet their protein requirements and 90% of us don't even know what our daily protein requirements are but now you would ask me that why do we even need protein in the first place protein isn't just for bodybuilders my friend virtually every tissue in our body whether it be our muscles whether it be skin whether it be hairs whether it be nails our bones connective tissues like ligaments tendons then there are a few hormones there are a few enzymes antibodies even hemoglobin require protein as their building blocks protein isn't just for bodybuilders my friend we, we all need protein but the amount of protein requirement for you might not be the same as me and not all the protein sources are created equally and if you want better skin if you want better bones if you want better hairs if you want more muscle drop body fat improve your immunity get better energy levels you need more protein my friend and by the end of this episode you will exactly know how much protein you actually need what are the best protein sources and how to eat those to avoid any digestive discomfort as always vine here lecturer of exercise science at national strength and conditioning association india a body transformation and performance coach here to help you with all the necessary tools knowledge and resources to make your transformation and performance journey easier faster and enjoyable and without further ado let's get into today's episode the term protein comes from the greek word known as proteus which basically means of prime importance or primary that is definitely because of the magnitude of the importance of protein for our overall health and well being we all no matter what age group we are no matter we are like babies one year old one month old <laughs> they need protein till the time we are like 99 year old till the time we are 80 year old whatever age group you are in we all need protein my friend and that is why it is also called as the primary macronutrient primary means the most essential one and macro means the require the nutrient that we need in slightly higher quantities so now we already know why we need protein in the first place it is for tissue formation it is for better muscle to draw body fat for better immunity for better hemoglobin formation for tissue repair for better skin hair and almost every tissue in our body according to the latest research it is clear that not everyone needs the same amount of protein and we all could benefit from different amount of protein intake but here when it comes to protein the quantity of protein is slightly better indicator than the quality of protein because if we are hitting the protein threshold beyond a point even if we are consuming it from lower quality protein sources we would almost be getting the same results so that is why when it comes to protein more is not always better and better is better that is about the quality and quantity of the protein we are going to go into more nuances about this in the later parts but as of now just remember that eating too much of protein is not going to be as important and it is not going to give us the same amount of risk so now we would be talking about according to your specific scenario how much protein do you actually need so first scenario if you are a general person sedentary person do not have a lot of physical activity uh, sedentary a lot of time don't have any strength or power or athletic goals don't want to draw body fat don't want to build muscle just want to live a normal healthy life although this won't be considered as normal healthy life unless you are exercising unless you are doing some challenging activities unless you are moving a lot using your physical self but yes this could be you at this moment and you are hoping to improve in the coming time but you still need protein and your protein requirements would generally be around 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kg of your body weight so this would be around if you are a 70 kg person this would be around 82 grams of protein to like 96 grams of protein as per 70 kg person 
okay why do you need protein even though you don't have any strength goals even though you just want to live a healthier life is to have better immunity to have better muscle health because again if you don't have muscle your body won't be able to carry out the load you won't be able to do all of the physical activities you would be in a pain a lot of time your posture and everything would suffer and your overall health metabolism all of those things will suffer so that is why 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein is like the minimum thing that everybody should be consuming okay but if you consume more than 1.6 grams per kg would it be not beneficial for you not not at all and even though you consume more than 1.6 grams it won't actually be any harmful for you unless you have pre diagnosed kidney problems okay if you have pre diagnosed kidney problems we will have to just be a little cautious about the protein intake about the excretion about the digestion and all of those things but if those things are taken care of even eating more than 1.6 grams won't be a problem for you but what happens is we would be discussing that in the next part there are a few nuances here talking about the second category second category of people are the people who are trying to lose body fat the people who are trying to lose weight trying to lose body fat these are the people who will need more amount of protein as a whole so they will need almost around 1.6 to 2.2 grams of 2.2 grams of kg per kg 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kg of their body weight okay why they need more protein per kg of their body weight because of a few reasons here number one is the satiety component of the protein whenever we are eating protein or this is an analogy i like to give always i have given it like a few times in the past episodes as well but i'll tell it to you again if you have missed so far okay our stomach is like a furnace furnace is trying to melt all of the metals that comes inside and pass on the liquid metal to the intestines okay so what our stomach will do is it is trying to melt all of the metals that are going to come in so protein is like a big brick of metal big thick brick of metal that is going inside the furnace and which is to be melted okay when it comes to carbohydrates and fats carbohydrates are like small balls of metals which are very small and very small in size and that's why they won't be taking a lot of energy and a lot of time to get digested to get melted whereas when it comes to fat fat is like the shavings of metals which is like uh, what happens when we grate the cheese on top of the pizza just small 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 shavings of metals it virtually won't take a lot of energy won't take a lot of time will get digested very easily but when we put a brick of metal inside this furnace it takes a lot more energy it also takes a lot more time to get digested so that's why whenever we eat more protein rich foods more high protein meals what happens is we stay satiated we don't get hungry very often we don't crave for food very often and the energy levels are nice and stable okay so this is number one component why higher protein diets are specifically recommended for fat loss for weight loss okay number two is the thermic effect of food again thermic effect of food is nothing but the energy required by our body to digest and absorb a specific food now just like we discussed protein is a brick of metal that if put in the furnace it requires more energy and more time to get digested so more energy means the thermic effect of food of protein is around 25 to 33 grams 33 percentage which would basically means if we are getting 100 calories from protein what our body will do is it will need like 67 not 67 means the body will get just around 67 to 75 calories only because the remaining 33 to 25 25 to 33 percent of calories would be gone into digesting the protein itself. Okay, so the net calories that we would be getting even after eating 100 calories from protein would be just around 67 to like 75 grams. Which overall, if we if we culminate that and take it as a higher number, if we are consuming 1000 calories from protein we would not actually get 1000 calories we would get a lot lesser than the 1000 calories because majority of the calories are going into digesting the protein itself so this will also help us to create a calorie deficit and stay in a calorie deficit for long as calorie deficit is the driver of fat loss okay then after the satiety after the thermic effect of food 
protein will also help us to preserve lean muscle mass when we are on a dieting phase because when we are on a dieting phase if we will also drop muscles if we will not preserve our muscles we will not end up looking lean and toned we will end up looking skinny skinny is just very thin person okay and we never want to look thin we want to look lean we want to look toned we want to get that actor actress kind of a physique that are glass shape those lean and toned arms that flat waistline and everything and that is only possible if we preserve the muscle mass or at least have built some muscle mass okay so that is why this is one of the most important part apart from these muscles are also metabolically active tissues metabolically active tissues basically means that they need more energy just to survive or just to be there on the body so when a person having 70 kg body weight and the other person having 70 kg body weight but no, person number 1 having more muscle mass than this person this person would have a higher metabolic rate means he would be spending more calories even at rest even without exercising just because he has slightly higher muscle mass okay so that again helps us to stay in a calorie deficit that burns more calories even at rest what else do we want in life okay amazing phenomenon and apart from these there are two more things hemoglobin again to form hemoglobin we need protein then last one immunity whenever we are on a calorie deficit diet whenever we are restricting calories we are also some or the other way around restricting the nutrients that are going inside the body so here the immunity should not get hampered and protein plays a very important role in keeping the immunity high keeping the antibody levels high so these are the multitudes of reason why we need to have higher protein intake when we are trying to lose weight and how much protein do we actually need 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kg of body weight is like good number to hit but what happens here is beyond 1.6 grams per kg of body weight what happens is now let's imagine a graph where we are equating protein with the amount of results results in terms of muscle hypertrophy in terms of strength in terms of recovery and all of those things so the curves are linear and going up exponentially high till the point we reach 1.6 grams of protein per kg of body weight till the time both the curves are running same protein intake going high the results going high straight in line parallel linear results but beyond 1.6 grams what happens is the protein intake goes high straight line exponentially high but the results do not go high in the same way the results somehow play to and not we could not call it a play to but they are not increasing exponentially just like the increase in protein the results would just tail a little bit and they would increase definitely till 2 2 grams 2.2 grams per kg of body weight the results would slightly be better than 1.6 grams but not as better as what we could have achieved till 1.6 grams so going beyond 1.6 gram is not very optimal but if you want to squeeze out every ounce if you want to get the best possible results going on a higher end could slightly be a better option and again when you are eating more protein the hunger levels and everything would be very nicely balanced and you won't be facing a lot of problem the fat loss journey would overall be a lot easier for you then talking about the third category third category is about the people who are athletes who are strength athletes who are field athletes and stuff like that for athletes the requirements of protein is around 1.6 to just 2 grams per kg of body weight slightly less than the people who are trying to lose fat just because athletes need a lot of protein because the wear and tear of the body muscles ligaments tissues bones they are slightly higher and they need to recover from all of these stuff so that's why the protein requirements are higher but not too high because satiety of the protein will also reduce the overall food quantity and could compromise on the overall calorie intake because whenever we are talking about athletes athlete needs a lot of energy and a lot of energy we athletes also need a lot of carbs fats or overall calories so when the protein intake is too high it also reduces the overall food intake and it could also compromise with the overall calories or the calories coming from carbohydrates and fats so that's why it is better to stick around 1.6 grams or 1.8 grams or 2 grams per kg if the other factors are not getting compromised 
so this is the part so every time just like i told you that more is not always better better is better here 1.6 1.8 grams per kg of body weight is also a great number to hit and that will give us the best possible results but staying on a higher range if the other factors are not getting compromised would also do wonders for the athletes okay the next category of the people is the last one and this is about professional bodybuilders and this is about professional fitness models or photo shoot who want to get into that stuff and specifically aesthetic focused people where their aesthetics their size their muscles and all of those things are of the primary importance now these are the people that want the maximum benefit the maximum benefit they don't want the most optimal but they are ready to squeeze in every every little ounce of muscle gain and are willing to do everything to gain that for these guys majority of the times professional bodybuilders on performance are on performance enhancing drugs which is also called as steroids okay when they are on steroids the muscle protein synthesis is slightly higher digestion capacity is slightly more and they could eat a lot more food and still benefit from it and uh, they they don't hit a plateau at 1.6 they hit a plateau on uh, slightly more so for these guys even beyond 2 grams per kg of body weight could be very easily manageable and they could get amazing results with slightly higher protein intake even 2.5 to 3 grams of 3 grams of protein per kg of body weight could be a great number if they are using any external performance enhancing drugs okay but for natural athletes for natural bodybuilders for natural aesthetic people models who are trying to get into the ripped shape and trying to put on muscle mass staying at 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kg of body weight is the best number okay here managing the overall calories managing the protein requirements are both very very important now here if we are eating a lot of protein then again we are not that hungry and we cannot eat that much food and the calories so the carbohydrates and fat intake should be monitored and that should be tailored in such a way where if we are not getting as much results from higher protein intake beyond 1.8 beyond 2 then it is better to lower the protein intake and eat more of the carbs and fats to hit the goals and get the best possible results but what if we are overeating protein is there anything like overeating protein yes yes you could overeat protein but there has been overeating overfeeding studies on protein carbohydrates and fats where the subjects were fed more protein or we could say more calories beyond their maintenance calories from protein separate group from fat fat separate group from carbohydrates and from all of the three groups they were assessed about if they are overfed beyond their maintenance calories from protein from carbs or from fats what makes them gain more fat and the results were not very shocking the group that overate calories from extra fat gained the most amount of fat the group that overate the extra calories from carbohydrates also gained fat but not as much as the group that was overfed fats and the group that overfed protein did not significantly gain as much fat as compared to the carbohydrates and fat group so what this also co- could conclude is that even if we overeat protein it the chances of protein to get converted into fat is very less because of again the thermic effect of food would go a lot higher we would stay satiated and we would compensate on the other foods that we are actually eating higher muscle mass would also mean higher metabolic rate and you would be expending a lot more calories even at rest so these could be the proposed reasons why even after overeating protein even beyond the maintenance level could not add a significant amount of fat so that is how important protein is and that is how magical protein is now this was the most important part about protein the quantity of the protein now once the quantity of the protein is sorted the next part about the protein is about the quality of the protein now when we are talking about quality of the protein there are three things according to me that will give us the best idea about the quality of the protein first component is the amino acid composition of the protein source so when we talk about amino acid composition there are 21 amino acids that 
come together, form a chain and create one gram of protein. Okay, to form these one gram of protein, there are 21 amino acids required. But out of these 21 amino acids, nine of them are called as essential amino acids. Essential basically means that our body needs it from the food that we are eating. It cannot biosynthesize it on its own, just like the non-essential ones. Non-essential ones, our body could biosynthesize using the other nutrients. Okay, so these nine essential amino acids, we need it from the food. Out of these nine essential amino acids, there are three branched chain amino acids, also called as BCAA, branched chain amino acids. These three are the most important when it comes to muscle protein synthesis, when it comes to hypertrophy strength gains and all of those. things. Out of these three, there is one essential amino acid, which is also a part of branched chain amino acid, is called as leucine. Leucine is called as a king of amino acid. So leucine could by itself trigger or start or activate the muscle protein synthesis. There have been studies that have showed that even on a very low quality protein diet, if we supplement with leucine, the muscle protein synthesis could drastically go higher. Okay, so that is why having a good or a complete amino acid composition where the amount of essential amino acids are higher amount of branch chain amino acids and leucine is higher is considered as a better quality protein source than the rest okay so number one was amino acid composition number two was bioavailability or basically the digestibility of the protein now if even if there is a protein source that is very high or very better in the composition of essential amino acids and overall amino acid composition but it is not bioavailable not digestible for us as humans then if we are not able to digest it we are not able to get anything out of it okay we are not what we eat we are what we could digest and absorb okay so if it is not getting digested what's happening with the food you know it's just ending up in your toilet the next day okay that is what is happening with the food okay so digestibility is also very very important and the third one is the protein to calorie ratio protein to calorie ratio means protein is a macronutrient it contains calories but every food source would also have carbohydrates and fats at a varying quantity okay so to get 25 grams of amino acids to get 25 grams of protein how much calories are we getting from that food source is also very important because when it comes to transformations when it comes to performance enhancement it is not just about the protein it is also about how many calories we are getting now if your protein goal is to hit 100 grams of protein by the end of the day if you are eating it from the lean protein sources where you are not getting anything else apart from the protein you would be able to get 100 grams of protein within very less calories nor in terms of if you are not eating that lean protein sources if you are eating it from the other protein sources you would be getting a lot higher calories from the source so managing the calories managing the protein both of them are important so that's why to regulate or to know which is the higher quality protein we have three components one is the amino acid composition second is the digestibility of the protein source and the third is protein to calorie rate. there are two terminologies here one is called as pdcaas which stands for protein digestibility corrected amino acid score and second one is diaas which is digestible indispensable amino acid score what these two things tell us is basically the amino acid composition of a protein and according to the bioavailability or the digestibility of the protein these two things have gave us a list of protein sources about how well amino acid composition it has and how easily it is digestible for we humans so according to this the list of top 5 protein sources is number 1 whey protein isolate whey protein isolate is like a 10 on 10 protein source here the digestibility is amazing essential amino acids bcaa's leucine and the entire amino acid composition is super high so this gives us a 10 on 10 score second thing on the list is egg whites egg whites are also on top of the list they also have a 10 on 10 score just like whey protein isolate amino acid composition is great they are highly digestible amazing source for protein number three is milk 
Yes, even whey protein is made up from milk. That's why milk has to be there on the top list. But here, when it comes about milk, the score is a 10 on 10, but it is around 9.5 to 9.8. But still, milk is also very digestible. These days, the milk is very adulterated. Cows, buffaloes, all of them are like given a lot of hormones fed a lot of stuff which will increase their milk production and this is what is causing a lot of problems with the humans creating lactose intolerance and a lot of milk related allergies and stuff so that is why consumption of milk directly is slightly what we could say controversial but then again if we are getting protein from milk or even milk products like yogurt like cottage cheese like proper cheese paneer these are also very high in the pdcaa school okay that is why milk is on the number three on this list number four on the list as well anticipated meat and meat products not meat products not the processed meats but specifically lean meat chicken breast then comes fish then comes pork um, turkey beef even these meat sources which we don't usually eat but still they are on very high on the list of quality protein sources they are not 10 on 10 protein sources but around 9 they are amazing protein sources very well digestible for humans and the amino acid composition is super high okay apart from these the number fifth will shock you and that is none other than soy protein isolate Soy protein isolate is on number 5 on the list despite its score being 10 on 10. On the PDCAS scale, the score is 10 on 10 but this is soy protein isolate and not exactly the protein that we get from eating soya chunks or the soya beans. Okay, so this is the isolate form, the powdered form, the protein supplement form of soy protein. But then again, as it is an isolate form, as it is a uh, used as a supplement what will also happen is the satiety effect and everything would slightly be less than the whole food okay but then again when we talk about protein the score is super high amino acid availability is very nice and digestibility is also high but the thing with soy products is that the thing about the hormonal effects of soya bean is something that creates a little bit of a controversy around soy products and soy protein as well so that is why soy protein even if it has 10 on 10 score i would personally recommend that soya bean should or soy products should not be your first priority when it comes to consuming protein okay although we all can consume soy even in a little higher quantities but it should not be consumed very frequently and it should not basically be for the first priority for your consuming your protein requirements okay that is about the top five sources then you would be asking about what about vegans what about vegetarians what about we have heard that dal rajma chole sprouts all of these are like great protein sources then why did i not include any of these sources so far and the reason is very simple just like we discussed the three parameters about the quality of the protein number one is amino acid composition number two is the digestibility and number three is protein to calorie ratio let's consider one thing or let's consider dal dal or basically lentils okay as a protein source and consider chicken breast as a protein source now if we consider or if we take 25 grams of protein from both of them 25 grams from chicken breast 25 grams from dal what will happen is to get 25 grams of protein from chicken breast we would only need around 120 calories means we will only get around 110 to 120 calories to get 25 grams of protein from chicken breast okay but the same 25 grams of protein from lentils or from dals we will have to consume 380 to like 450 calories which is almost four times or 3.8 to like four times of the calories that we are getting from chicken breast okay so at the end of the day protein to calorie ratios are drastically different apart from the protein to calorie ratios vegan foods or vegan protein sources are very low on the essential amino acids very low on the branch chain amino acids very low on the leucine content so the muscle protein synthesis effect that we get from the vegan protein sources is not as high as that of a primary protein sources so essential amino acid low okay 
higher calories to get the same amount of protein and the third point the digestibility of the protein is also a lot less the pdcaa score for lentils or for all of the vegetarian food sources sprouts rajma chole and all of those ranges around 0.5 to like 0.7 from a scale of 0 to 1 okay 0.5 to 0.7 is not bad is not bad but not as great as like 9 and 10 about 9 and 10 that means 0 0.9 and 1 the scores about whey protein isolate milk products then we have egg whites we have chicken and all of the meat products and so okay these five are like from 9 to like 0 0.9 to 1 okay so the pdca scores for all of the vegan sources are around 0.5 to 0.75 which is not bad but not as good so on all of the three parameters that we use to compare the quality of the protein amino acid composition the digestibility and the protein to calorie ratio on all the three the dal sprouts rajma chole all of them are slightly lesser than the protein sources that we actually discussed and are naturally or typically tend to come from the animal sources so that is the reason why vegan food sources are not considered to be a very high quality protein source but the thing with the thing with vegan protein sources is if we consider these food sources just like dal sprouts rajma chole if we compare them with carbohydrate sources like dal uh, like uh, what we could say wheat and rice the calories from all of the threes are like same from dal from wheat and from rice the calories would be almost the same but within the same calories we would get a lot higher protein from dal as compared to wheat and rice we would get a lot less carbohydrates from dal as compared to wheat and rice we would get slightly higher fibers from dal as compared to wheat and rice so what we could call this dal or the sprouts or rajma chole all of these things as better carbohydrate sources don't consider them as protein sources but consider them as a better carbohydrate sources that also contains a little bit of protein quality of protein is not that high but then again if we are consuming them as a carbohydrate source we are also getting a lot more protein from the carbohydrate source itself because if we are just eating wheat and rice we are not getting a lot of protein from there okay so consider these things as better carbohydrate sources rather than protein sources but if you are a complete vegan if you are not taking even milk products then what you could do is you could start with protein complementation now just like we discussed there are nine essential amino acids there are different different foods that are higher or lower in different different essential amino acids so there if an amino acid that is lesser in like three essential amino acids and there is a different food source that contains these three essential amino acids but is lower on the remaining four essential amino acids which these food source a, food source number a is less on if we pair these two they could complement each other's essential amino acid profile and they could give us a complete amino acid profile okay so source a is less on any three of the essential amino acid source b is higher on these three essential amino acids but is lower on the other four amino essential amino acid which source b is higher on we pair those two we get a complete essential amino acid profile if we pair these things so what could be the best combinations it is pea and rice so pea and rice protein isolates are generally a complete essential amino acid proteins and are great for muscle protein synthesis strength gains recovery all of those things uh, pea and rice then we could always pair lentils and rice so lentils pulses beans and rice so rajma chole dal chawal these are again great combinations sprouts and rice these are great combinations that could give us a complete pool of amino acids and would fill up the the gaps between the essential amino acid profile of both of the sources then we could also pair in peanut butter with brown bread so here nuts and grains so nuts and grains are also a great combination grains could be different different grains nut butters could be different different nut butters or nuts itself these could be paired together to give us a complete essential amino acid profile but at the end of the day what happens is we are also getting a lot of 
calories from it because of higher carbohydrate content when it comes to peanut butter peanut butter is also sold as high protein peanut butter but when we see the nutrient label or the ingredient list and the nutrient level of it nut butters peanut butter almond butter whichever cashew butter they are a lot higher on the fat content than the protein content so protein is like the fat is like 3x of the protein that we are getting from these peanut butters nut butters and all of those things same thing with the dal rice rajma chole stuff the protein is a lot less than the carbohydrates that we get from these source the carbohydrates is almost 2 to 3x of the amount of protein in these sources that's why i told you to consider these as better carbohydrate sources than to consider them as a protein source so these are the strategies about how we could get in quality protein and the list of the quality protein we just discussed we just discussed about the quantity about how much protein do you actually need about which are the quality protein sources and how to distinguish between different protein sources and which are the best one now the last point is how should we consume the protein in a way where it does not cause any digestive discomfort because again at the end of the day you would have heard about it that if we eat a lot of protein we would get acne heat would increase in the body and we face gases constipation a lot of digestive issues that is not actually the case my friend if we digest the protein well then we don't face any of these problems number one strategy is don't drastically increase your protein intake so if you haven't even been able to consume 50 grams of protein from a very long time don't go from like 30 grams to like 130 grams that would be a big jump for you and your body won't have the digestive enzymes won't be ready to digest all of these and this could cause a little bit of a problem so if you were not eating a lot of protein start slow every three days you could increase the protein by like 30 30 30 grams and within like a week or two you would be able to hit your optimal numbers of protein so that would not cause a lot of problem with digesting protein even if your digestive system is uh, slightly on a weaker side apart from this second thing is to cook the protein well now we have seen uh, arnold and in terminator and in a lot of those movies opening the egg and drinking it as a whole without even cooking it this is not the right way to consume protein my friend eating raw eggs or even half fry eggs and everything is not the best way to consume protein the digestibility of the protein sources increases when we cook the meats cook the eggs cook the stuff properly okay so cook it well cooking it well will definitely improve the bioavailability or the digestibility of the protein sources and will be will will be able to digest it a lot well without a lot of problems number three is marinate the proteins well now especially about the meat if we marinate them with acidic sources like lemon juice like vinegar like yogurt curd things like this this could marinate and make the meat a lot tender and till the time we cook it the meat would be very easy very easy on the digestion would become a lot tender the bonds and everything would break down a little bit and the protein would be a lot more digestible this was tip three point number four is chew your protein well my friend because majority of the people are just gulping down their food like snakes we are not snakes my friend we are given teeth to bite and chew our food and break it down into small small pieces the saliva is also a form or one of the digestive enzyme that helps with the digestion of the food so chew the food well convert it into a lot less small 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 pieces before gulping it down okay the saliva will again help with the digestion process and the slower you eat there has been this research that has shown that the people who just reduce their eating speed consume a lot less calories consume a lot less calories and the, the number was so high i don't exactly remember what the number was but it was around 25 to 40 percent something so 25 to 40 percent of lower calorie or reduction in calorie consumed just by eating the food slow is like drastic change okay so whenever you are eating eat one 
one bite and keep the spoon down don't think about the next bite till the time this food inside your mouth is nicely chewed you get a good flavor of it you get a feel of that food you feel the texture of that food and once you gulped it down then pick up the spoon then make the next bite and then have it this simple change would help you to consume a lot less calories than what you actually would if you were just gulping the food down like a snake okay so don't do this mistake then comes tip number 5 that is include digestive enzymes now digestive enzymes doesn't always have to be in a supplement form there are two fruits papaya and and pineapple both of these fruits papaya contains a proteolytic enzyme called as pepin and pineapple contains a digestive enzyme called as bromelain okay these are proteolytic enzymes proteolytic enzymes basically means they will help us with the digestive enzymes that will help us with breaking down protein more effectively okay so consume more of papayas more of bromelain or more of pineapple basically these will help with helping you to have more enzymes in your stomach to help you to break down protein next comes the prebiotics and the probiotics prebiotics and the probiotics basically means probiotics are the gut microbiome the bacteria in your gut are basically good bacteria they are also called as probiotics prebiotic is basically the food for this bacteria so eating a lot of veggies eating a lot of yogurt curd and these things would help us with more pre and probiotics the veggies the fibers that we get from the veggies basically our body is not able to digest fibers very well so what happens with the fibers is fibers just goes inside the stomach and forms a nice big bulk that also helps with the excretion process more smoother more quantity more volume of the stool going out smoother process overall helps with detoxification also gets the cholesterol and everything all the toxins from the body and throws it out of the body so that is one of the best benefit also helps with controlling blood sugar regulation helps with satiety helps with keeping us full reducing hunger and feeling of fullness a lot of benefits from fibers while it also slows down the gastric emptying process gastric emptying process means eating the food and going to the washroom eating the food and going to the washroom okay this will slow it down this will slow it down when it slows it down our body the food will be in the gut for slightly longer and here there are more chances for the bacteria to break the food down and get more protein absorbed into the blood stream so that's why we need a lot of fibers we need to include raw veggies into our diet apart from that yogurts could definitely help with increasing probiotic prebiotics and those stuff and this could also help with digestion of protein now the last two are very very simple last second is avoid overeating when we are overeating my friend simple tip now i don't have to explain this a lot to you when we are overeating we are just dumping more food inside the stomach and then we also need more digestive enzyme we will need more prebiotic probiotic to digest and absorb the food we there's a lot of load on the digestive system all the other systems would slightly go down the body will go into a parasympathetic zone you won't be able to concentrate you won't be able to function well and that would also hamper your digestion to a certain extent so avoid overeating last but not the least activity your activity is also very important my friend now you will observe this if you are the sedentary for for continuous a week or to a week or so your digestion will suffer your digestion will be the first thing that would suffer your sleep will suffer your energy levels will suffer and a lot of these things because again what happens when we stay active there's a lot better blood circulation that's happening throughout the body okay there would be a lot better blood circulation to the digestive system there is also one term called as peristalsis what this simply means is the movement of food inside our digestive tract so how the food basically moves is it the intestines it contracts relax contracts relax contracts relax and slowly slowly the moves the food moves inside the gut and then it slowly goes through the digestion process so slightly staying active throughout the day and especially walk after your meals helps with this process helps with super enhancing this process and would also help with digestion of protein 
so these were the basic and the simplest tips my friend you don't need to start supplementing with a lot of food uh, a lot of tablets medicines stuff like that if you just focus on these basic stuff that's about it my friend we talked about how much protein do you actually need why do you actually need protein how it could affect your transformation and the progress that you make we also discussed about the quality of protein and what are the factors that determine the quality of protein and how to get the best possible proteins even if you are a vegan last but not the least we discussed about how to make sure that we don't face any digestive issues when we are consuming a slightly higher protein diet that's about today's episode my friend if you got some value out of this episode if you learned something new from this episode please drop a comment drop a like that would help me to stay motivated share it with a friend so that we would be able to reach a lot of people that will motivate me that will inspire me to keep putting out a lot of such amazing content for you all and see you on the next sunday but meanwhile till the time i upload my next podcast make sure that you are following me on instagram i am on instagram as fitness engineer vinay i am very active on the stories also posting valuable content if you want to see a glimpse of what happens in my day to day life what i eat how i digest protein how much protein i eat what are my favorite sources what happens in my life how i work out and all of those things i share it on my instagram stories so make sure that you are following me on instagram as well i am as fitness engineer_vinay and vinay here signing off bye